All right. And then we'll go through our footwork stuff, okay, without any bangs. We'll do stands and starts, okay? We'll have all the bags covered here, or all the uh, shoes here, no bags. And I will stand over here, okay, to the side or over here, because we're doing this on the line. We've got, we have a field turf field, we got the shoots down on the corner of the end zone where we got the nice wide white stripe in the back of the end zone. And they're putting their down hand, I don't have the drawn they're going, actually putting their down hand about right there. So I can stand on the side and I'm watching that first step to see if it's the right length or too long. And I'm using the wide white stripe to tell me because we've got this, this edge of the chute is on, if the wide white stripe's like that, this edge is on there, so their feet are about right here. If their first step is on or over, the front edge of that white stripe, they're taking too big of a first step. And as I said before in the, in, when I was talking about stance, if the first step's too long, it takes too long to get the second step done. We talk in terms of eight inch steps. I know some talk in terms of six inch steps. I don't think you can really sprint with six inch steps. So we talk in terms of eight inch steps. To be honest with you, I'll even take a foot, okay? But I don't want it 18 inches. I certainly don't want it 24 inches. And part of it is, uh, you know, individual. Some kids that are a little longer might take a little bit longer first step, okay? But approximately eight inches. So I'm watching their takeoff there. The other thing that we'll do, and this is, I don't like it, but it's a fact, our field is also lined for soccer. So about halfway, about five yards through the end zone, then that's not drawn to scale. So we're doing it on the back of the end line. Of course, here's the goal line. And about halfway in between is a yellow soccer goal line. And it actually is perfect for our drills because we try to make things competitive in terms of our takeoff stuff. So I'll be, I'll be watching there. And some years I'll have a student assistant that maybe has had too many concussions or uh, you know, not good enough to play in college, but wants to be part of the program. And I'll have him stand on the yellow line, and they're racing to that yellow line. And if, I, if I'm really not happy with how competitive they're being, whoever wins, wins. The other four are doing 10 push-ups, okay? So we make it competitive in terms of racing to the yellow line. So that's stands and starts. Then we'll go, uh, and, and I'll come back to some of our footwork stuff, well, no, I'm going to go to the footwork stuff. Where am I at? No, I'm not. Where am I at here? I need to. Part of the problem is as you get older, you can't see as well, so you have to wear reading glasses over your contact lenses. So, yeah, we'll go to drive block progression. That's fine. All right. Anybody ever seen the video or that Buck Nicer one on one drive block? Maybe the single best video I've ever seen. We do a lot of the same type of thing, okay? We do a lot of the same type of thing, which is why I've got it here. I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time on it. But here's our, we start out in a form fit. On the bag, in the shoes. We'll actually physically have them, if the, if the bag's right here, they will physically walk in and they'll be in. They're walking form, they'll get into a form fit position because when they do that kinesthetically they're going to learn their, their brain is going to be able to learn what perfect drive block position feels like okay for us our punch point at least theoretically the way we coach it, it tends to be a little bit higher which is maybe why I make it so low well because kids always play higher than they want them to our punch point is the belly button with our eyes at the level of the base of the chest plate, okay? Because if, we, if, you, if you try to teach them to punch the base of the chest plate, they're gonna come up. And that's the other thing with taking an eight inch step versus a longer one. You take a long first step, it's automatically gonna pull the shoulders up. So a shorter step, we wanna keep the knees ahead of the hips and the hips ahead of the heels. Knees ahead of the hips, hips ahead of the heels. Back flat, so anyway, we're gonna get in perfect form fit position and just let them sit there for about 30 seconds and get a feel for what that is again it's, it's very important for the first for the freshmen juniors and seniors get tired of it but they haven't in, in division three 
We can't wear pads for spring practice. They haven't been in that position for nine months, so they need to be retaught too. And I think if I can leave you with one more thing that might be important to consider. Never assume your kids know anything. I start the season with the same blocking progression drills every year. I don't care if I've got five starters back and their five backups are all back. Never assume they know anything. Reteach it every year, okay? So we get them in the four and fifth position. Coach, what is that four and fifth position? Shoulder on, elbow up, hands on. We're a hands block team primarily. We will shoulder block a little bit with the center on the scoot block, but we're primarily a hands block team. So we're punching the belly button, eyes at the base of the chest plate level. So, if, hold this so it doesn't slide. So if, I'm, if, if this is the stand up dummy, I'm gonna get in here with my thumbs up, elbows in, right like this, back arch, okay? In a form fit position, right like this. Coaching point, when you're trying to teach that back arch in that position. Tell your kids, and I, I'll demonstrate this, I don't know how many years I'm gonna be able to do this. When you squat, you get a good arch in your back, right? Okay, so you squat down to parallel, and then you rock forward, okay? That's a form fit position. It's a squat position, leaning forward. Back is arched, eyes are up, okay? So we'll get in that form fit position. And then we'll rotate through. And then we'll do what we call fire to the fit. We'll get them in the front of the chutes, like this, with the bag there, okay? And they will come off the ball, two-step punch and freeze. Two-step punch and freeze, because it should be about two steps to get to where the bag's at. Now, the two steps, you can watch again to make sure they're not overstepping. You can watch the distance and so on. Why freeze when they punch? Because we want to get them into the form fit position with the two steps. I don't do that a lot. I'll do a two step freeze the first day because I don't want them getting used to stopping after two steps. And if you continue to rep that, that can become a habit as well but I do want them to learn how to get off the ball and get into the proper form fit position. So we'll do it the first day as we're teaching the progression. After that, we're not gonna do any two-step free stuff, okay? And then, we will just go to the full drive. So they'll get in their stance on this side, on the cadence. They're gonna step with their inside foot. Centers will alternate, right foot first, left foot second. And they're just going to come off the ball, they're going to, you know, punch the bag at belly, be belly, no, belly button height. And we have, here's another coaching point. Get the heaviest frickin' bags you can. We used to have those light, square, stand-up dummies that folded and, and were easy to push. So I, I got Ron to give me five seven-foot-high, 80-pound bags. They've got to sprint off the ball and punch and run their feet if they're going to get movement on that thing. And the beauty of that is there's side carrying handles that are right at where the belly button of the defender should be as he's coming out of his stance. So I can judge their hand strike, I can judge their punch where it is relative to those side handles in terms of uh, are they punching at the right level. And then they're pounding their feet and then when I blow the whistle, they're going to freeze and frame back up into their form fit position. Why do I have them do that? Because as they get back into their form fit position, it's, I mean, I can look and watch them do that and I know exactly what they've done wrong. They either have to slide their body back down because they got too high, or they've got to widen their feet a little bit because we do widen their feet on contact, or they're way overextended because they didn't bring their feet with them. So it's a way for you to look at them and see what they're doing right and wrong. And it's a way for them, again, through their, their own kinematic feedback, to learn to coach themselves on their body positions and their block. Anytime we're working with bags, we're going to freeze and frame up when we blow the whistle, okay? So that's our drive block progression in terms of just the drive block. One of the things, and I've got this across the top, that I think is, uh, is an important thing, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. Once you're there, 
It's just a driveway. I think sometimes in order, and I, I was, I, I've been guilty of this too. We want to appear to our kids like we're great coaches. So I'm going to teach you 15 different blocks that you need to learn. Well, kids aren't going to learn 15 different blocks. If you can simplify it down and you're teaching footwork and hand and eye placement, and they get the concept that once they're there and they're in their fit, it's just a drive block, then they're learning one block. They're just learning some different ways to get to it. And I think at least in, in the early parts of, of the teaching part of it, that makes it a lot easier for them. Okay? 